Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, let's take a look at our study guide for the chapter three test that you're going to be taking as soon as we get done watching this video. Um, the directions on the front side were to circle the terms and simplify the expressions, and you'd simplify the expressions according to the rules of PEMDAS. You you can't avoid PEMDAS, but we might be able to make things a little bit simpler as far as the order of operations are concerned if you circle the terms first. But you, technically, when you're solving these problems, you really don't have to do that. But circling the terms, you know, the terms are the parts that get added together. So this is one complete term, that's one complete term. So when you simplify 5 times 3, that gives you 15. And then you simplify, that doesn't have to be simplified, so you end up doing 15 plus 4 is equal to 19. Okay, here on this one, uh, circling the terms, you would do the division first. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and then 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And here, the terms are, it's like a complicated mess that's being added together. Since this subtraction problem is inside parentheses, and that's being multiplied times the number 2, which is being multiplied times 7, this is all one big term. And so to simplify this, you would start by copying the problem down, then working through the order of operations. So you do the parentheses first. That would be 9 minus 4 gives you 5. So rewrite everything else. And now we don't have any exponents, but we do have multiplication. And the multiplication says go from left to right. <laughs> so excuse me. Hold on for a second. And so uh, we've got two different ways of showing multiplication here. You've got the dot and you've got the number that's being uh, multiplied times the quantity inside that parentheses. And when there's no symbol in between the number and the parentheses, that means to multiply. So this is technically 10 times 7, which gives you an answer of 70, which is our answer here. Okay, so I am not going to, let me go ahead and rewrite this guy again. I'm not going to go over each one of these problems, but I'll do a couple of random ones that are a little bit more complicated. And if you need me to work out any of the others, uh, just jump on to a Google Meet, send me an email, uh, let me know, and I will uh, do my best to communicate this with you before you take the test. So uh, let's take, say, number five. Number five, here's a plus sign and there's a minus sign. So circling the terms, you get 15 divided by 3 is 5. And this is one big term, so we have to do the order of operations. I should probably hold on for a second. Let's make that a little bit easier so we can see this. So that is 7 times 8 plus 1, but we got to do the 8 plus 1 first. So that becomes 7 times 9, which is 63. And then you've got this term, which is the 6. So 5 plus 63 is 68, and 68 minus 6 gives you a 62 for an answer, and that's what we got here. Now, if you were to just go straight through and do the order of operations on this problem, I would start by copying the problem down exactly how you see it, and then we'll do parentheses first. So that would be this part right here. So then you have to copy everything down again, but now we're going to put a 9 on the inside. And now we have to do exponents, but there are no exponents in this problem. So then we'll go to multiplication and division. Remember, the multiplication and division can be done from left to right. Uh, the multiplication doesn't necessarily come first because it's listed first in PEMDAS. It's just you got both of them. They're equal partners. So I'm going to do this one, which is 5. And I'll do this one, which is 63. And then I'll do keep that one there. And by the time we've gotten through all of this, all we have are addition and subtraction left, which is precisely what we had here when we broke them into their individual terms and simplified the terms first. So if you understand what it means to circle the terms and what terms are, and then you just use PEMDAS for each individual term, I think you'll find it's actually easier to solve these problems. A few students that I've had in the past only do it this way. Most students prefer to go with what they know, and that is just continuing with MDOS throughout the entire process. All right, uh, let me go ahead and show the rest of these. 
and maybe I'll choose one more to simplify. Um, I'll tell you right now, for the test, if you can do any of these one through six, you're probably good for the test. Um, but it's good for you to be able to do the more complicated ones because, you know, they're complicated and you want to know how to do them. So how about let's do 13 and then I will do, um, then I'll do 19 to finish this off. So let's do 13 first. So for 13, I'm going to, let's see if I circle the terms, that's a term. This complicated mess is a term, and that complicated mess is a term. So I'm going to go 4 squared plus 9 times 2 divided by 6 plus parentheses 6 minus 1 squared. So uh, if I do order of operations, I have to do this one first, right? So I'll just go ahead and do that term first. This is going to be 5 squared. And then I'll write everything else in because it's always good to keep everything track, uh, keep track of everything. Now we've got exponents to take care of. I do have parentheses there, but there's nothing to simplify inside the parentheses. So we're, it, it essentially is complete, and, and that's a part of a multiplication problem, which we'll get to after we do the exponents. So the exponents can be done separately from each other because they're different terms. So this is going to be 16. This is going to be 25. And then we still have our 9 times 2 divided by 6. And now I can take care of this. And this is multiplication and division from left to right. So I'll take care of the 18 divided by 6 becomes 3. And now to finish off the process, we've got our three terms. Once this has been simplified, once that's been simplified, once this has been simplified, you just got those three terms to add together. And we can do it in any order we want because all we're doing is adding. But the rules specifically say we'll work from left to right, so let's do that. So 16 plus 3 is 19, and 19 plus 25, uh, well, 19 or 20 plus 25 is 45, so this should be one less than 45. It'll be 44, and that is our answer. And then number 19, let's do this one to finish. If I were to circle the terms, that's one big term right there. That's another term here, and this is a third term there. So 42 plus 3 divided by 5, all in parentheses, gets raised to the second power. Plus 3 squared minus parentheses 5 times 2 raised to the second power. All right, let's take care of what's inside parentheses first. We got to do the 42 plus 3, which is 45, and 45 divided by 5 is going to give us an answer of 9, so it's going to become 9 squared. And inside parentheses here, 5 times 2 is 10, and that becomes 10 squared. So now we've got 9 squared plus 3 squared minus 10 squared. Now I'm going to do each one of those exponents, and that's going to simplify each of the terms, and then we'll add or subtract from left to right to finish. So this is 81 plus 9 minus 10 squared is 100. So what is 81 plus 9? That is 90 and 90 minus 100 gives us a final answer of negative 10 and that's our answer here so a lot going on there just double check make sure that you understand and you how to do the basics up here they do get more complicated but really it's just write down them dots and as you work through each problem cross off the ones that you've done until you finally get to the end and you can declare your answer. Okay, so those are the answers. Check your work. Let's move on to the next page. The next page is about subtracting integers. And so I'm a big fan of KFC. Uh, you could use models for some of these. It does say use one of the models for at least the first five differences. Uh, one of the models that I would prefer that you use would be using the plus and minus signs. So if I take problem number one, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're going to take away two negatives. So that leaves you with one, two, three, four negatives is your answer. Now, if you did negative six minus a negative two, and then you did KFC on top of that, then we would keep the negative six, we would flip that to a plus sign, and then we would change that to a positive two. Okay, so what does this model look like? One, two, three, four, five, six plus positive 2. How many zero pairs are there? 
two of them, so our final answer ends up being negative four, which is the same. So you could have used a couple of different processes to get to your answer. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not, you know, whether or not you know how to do the models is not the most important part. Whether or not you know how to get the correct answer using any strategy is what's important here, okay? So uh, let's take number two. I'll just do KFC the rest of the way out. You started with two, you take away negative three, and that's like, how can you take away three negatives when all you have are positives? So let's KFC this, keep this the same, put that to a plus sign, change that to a positive three instead of a negative three, and there you can see how your answer is gonna be five, okay? Uh, let me move down to uh, 11. 11 is a good one to do. Negative 6 minus negative 3 minus 5. So I'm going to do KFC in stages here. I'm going to start with KFC for the first couple of terms, where this guy stays as a negative 6, but that changes to plus a 3. And now if I want to just do minus 5, I can, or I could adjust my KFC again and change this to plus a negative 5. So now if you wanted to use your model, you're adding all these things together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, and then another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you got 1, 2, 3, 0 pairs, and the rest are all negatives. So that gives us a final answer of negative 8, which is what we've got right there. Or you could have just gone from left to right. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3, and negative 3 plus a negative 5 is also negative 8. Okay? Uh, I'll do one more. I'll do number 15, and that will end this. Okay, so let's take uh, negative 9 minus 9 minus a negative 9, and I'm going to do that KFC thing once again in stages. I'm going to keep, oops, stop it. I'm going to keep this as a negative 9. I'm going to flip that to a plus sign. I'm going to change that to a negative 9. Then I'm going to keep this as a negative 9 and flip that to a plus sign and change this to its opposite, which is positive 9. So I've rewritten this entire expression by changing all the minus signs to plus signs and changing all the terms directly to the right of those minus signs to their opposites, right? So this became negative 9 plus negative 9 plus a positive 9. That's what we've got here. So we end up with negative 18 plus 9, or you might have recognized that this right here forms a zero pair. So eventually our answer is just going to be negative 9. Okay, so just like with the other uh, problems, the order of operations on the front side of the study guide, if there's any other problem on here that you need help with, please do not hesitate to ask me questions, send me emails, and I can um, guide you through that before you get started on your chapter test. All right, uh, almost a little more than 13 minutes. All right, so hopefully you're doing well with this. You understand the basics. Go head over to the test and good luck. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good.